Hey there, Vince here, and welcome to Circuit Rewind. And this time I actually hit the record button, so I'm not wasting another 20 minutes of my time. <laughs> so what I got for you today is this little PWM fan controller that I put together. A real simple design, and let's go over what this is and why this exists and the reason that I put it together. So a little bit of story time. A couple of months ago, I went and replaced the 12 volt power supply for my entertainment center. The 12 volt power supply that I got is one unit size, so it fits directly into my media rack, and it has 18 independent outputs on it, each with its own individual fuse. So that the fuses kind of act like a circuit breaker, so they're basically, think of them as like 12 volt, two amp-ish uh, power circuits that I can route to anything that takes a 12 volt power. So for example, I have one line running to my Super Famicom. I have another line running to my Nintendo 64. I have another line running to a Sega Saturn and another line running to a Sega Dreamcast. And there's lines going to a bunch of other things too. I've modified or replaced the power supplies in each of my consoles to accept specifically a 12 volt DC input as its main power rather than whatever it's designed to take, like either, you know, 120 volt for the Dreamcast, or was it 9 volt, I think it is, for the Super Famicom? Some weird voltage like that. By doing this, I don't need any big bricks or anything like that to go to my consoles, because, you know, the Super Famicom has, like, pfft, freaking brick, right? Or the case of, like, the Dreamcast, which would just take another wall outlet, and I'd need, like, you know, a bigger and bigger and bigger surge protector to handle all my different consoles. This way, I have one plug going to the wall, and then this handles the power distribution to everything else. So, why am I ranting about this? Well, it turns out that it was noisy as hell, and I did not like it. 1U devices generally use 40 millimeter fans, because that's about how tall a 1U device is. And those little tiny fans are really, really loud and noisy. So I did what every rightful nerd would do, and I replaced it with a 40 mil knock to a fan. And in my opinion, that was still too noisy for what I wanted for my entertainment center because it's right next to my television. That's where I want to, you know, watch movies and stuff. I don't want to be distracted by the constant whir of a fan. So Noctua also has these little, what they call, like the noise reducers or fan reducers. And it's basically just a resistor that's wrapped up nicely that the fan plugs into and then that plugs into the power for wherever the fan power comes from, right? That reduces the current, which reduces the fan rotation speed, which reduces the noise. This still wasn't quite at the level of noise reduction that I wanted, so I wanted to take it one step further. I researched how to actually create that PWM signal that fans use, like on PCs, to control the rotational speed of a fan. And I'm gonna get into exactly how that works uh, a little bit later in this video. So I did it there, and then I also put one right afterwards into my GameCube, because I decided to take the fan out of the GameCube when I was doing some mods to it and cleaned it up to just, let's just slap a brand new fan into it. And I thought that was too noisy too, and I'm like, well, I just put together this PWM fan controller, so let's drop one to the GameCube too. Perfect, done. And it worked great, I love it. And then I was like, wait a minute, I have this really, really janky setup up in my server room right now, and it's been there for the full year and a half that I've lived here. So in my server room, it's right next to the attic, so it's upstairs, and there's a, there was this access panel, this small access panel between the server room and the attic, and so I decided to basically remove the board for the access panel and put in my own panel there and cut out the center of it and put six fans into it. So it's an arranged in a group of, you know, two columns of three fans each, and each of those are fed into its own individual power splitter, a really, really janky one, because it was the week that I was moving in and I didn't have any of my tools or anything like that available at the time, so apparently I just used um, gaff tape to hold it together crazy. Why did I do that? When I put the fans into the server room, though, they still were, again, same issue with the entertainment center. It was louder than I wanted it to be, so I wanted to reduce the noise of those. And with that super jank setup, I just ran 9 volts instead of 12 volts into the fans, even though the fans expected 12 volts. It, they still worked. It's been a year and a half that I had it running like that. And lower voltage means the fans don't have as much juice, so they're gonna spend at a lower rate, which reduces the noise, and yay, we win. But after doing all that research on how to do a PWM fan controller, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I can do something a lot more professional here. I can actually give these things proper 12 volts and then use the PWM signal to control the fan speed rather than just reducing the voltage. And I can also do something with um, making the board configurable, so at any point in time I can go and change the fan speed. So if I wanna raise it or lower it for whatever reason, I have fine-tuned control at any point in time rather than just switching a voltage, right? 
So I came up with this design here. The basics are we have DC 12 volt in, so it's just normal barrel jack. Everything uses it, my lights use it. I put three fan headers on it. So in my particular setup, there are two columns of three fans each, and each column is powered by a separate board, a separate circuit intentionally, because those are running on different battery backup UPS units. So if I lose a UPS unit, I only lose half the fans instead of all the fans. So even if there's a lower redundancy, you know, there's still something going on there, right? So the three fans plug into there, that's great. There's some jumpers here that control how much um, fan speed we want. So we can control up or down based on the position of these jumpers. So that makes it configurable. And then this entire other piece of this board here, it is a DigiSpark. It is a pre-made board, you can go out and buy them. That turned out to have everything else I needed already pre-made in one board. So normal PC fans, they have four wires on them, right? There's a ground wire, so just common ground neutral, whatever. There is a 12 volt power cable. So that's what gives the power to the motor to make it spin. And if you have just those two wires hooked up, that's enough to make this spin. It'll just always spin at full speed. The third wire is a tack wire. It tracks um, the rotational speed of the fans. So the faster the fan is spinning, the more that pin is gonna send out, you know, the, the tack information to say, hey, I'm going at like 2000 RPM, 3000 RPM, whatever. But we don't care. I'm not here to measure the RPM of the fan. I only care about the noise, which I'm gonna measure by ear. And then the fourth wire is that PWM wire, which that actually tells the fan how it has to spin. If there's no data coming across that line, the fan will just spin at full speed. But if you send a proper signal to that, you can tell the fan to either spin all the way up, spin all the way down, or somewhere in between. And this is what computers do to control the speed of fans. So like on your, your processor, your case fans, your graphics card, whatever, but I'm like, well, if those can do it, why can't I do it and control it? That PWM wire is actually five volt, not 12 volt, which is really interesting. So I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. Let's go back to our board here. Our microcontroller on this little DigiSpark board is an ATtiny85, which is designed to be a five volt chip, but we have 12 volts coming into this board. That'll just make that chip blow up, just boom, right? If you see an electro boom, sparks fly everywhere. But luckily this board also has what's called a voltage regulator on it. So what the voltage regulator does, this particular one, is it'll take the 12 volts in and then spit five volts out and that five volts goes to the microcontroller. And so that also means whatever voltage comes into this microcontroller is also the voltage going out on its digital signal pins, like its PWM pin going into the fan. This fan expects five volt signaling on its PWM wire and this outputs a five volt signal on its PWM line. It's almost like these were meant to go together. It's really, really cool how simple this was. I didn't need any extra components to make all that work. So now let's briefly talk, what is PWM anyway? It stands for pulse width modulation. It's a really simple signal if you actually start visualizing it here. So what is a pulse width? There's two components to it. We have the frequency and we have the duty cycle. So the frequency, think of it as just like you know, your normal digital square wave, up and down, up and down, up and down, and then a full up and down cycle, that is, you know, however many of those you fit every second is your hertz. And the span takes 25 kilohertz approximately. So that means 25,000 ups and downs every second, and that's the signal it takes. And you, you, may, you may think that's a lot, like, you know, 25,000 cycles, that, that's a whole bunch, right? But this microcontroller, its processor runs at eight megahertz at its lowest setting. So that's eight million cycles up and down. Or if you think of like your smartphone or your desktop computer, that's in the gigahertz range. So that's literally billions of cycles up and down every second. So 25,000, nothing for computers, even old computers. Super perfect, they can just do it. What exactly is that cycle? You're probably used to seeing digital cycles or you know digital clocks being this perfect up and down square. Well, let's start off with a 100% duty cycle. That's actually just a straight line, high voltage, straight across, like it's just always on. Now the inverse, we have a 0% duty cycle. That is just a flat zero or low signal all the way across. Those are real easy. A 50% duty cycle will give you that perfect square, like half the time it's up, half the time it's down. And that's probably what you're used to looking at for normal clock cycles or clock graphs. But now let's add 75% to this. 
So you can now see that the line with 75% duty cycle, it's actually up three quarters of the time and then down one quarter of the time. So it's still the same amount of up and down, like if you count them and where the up and down occur at, it's still that same 25 kilohertz, but now we spend more time on the up cycle and less time on the down cycle. Inversely, if we look at a 25% duty cycle, it's the exact opposite, where we have just that 25% on the high side, and now we have a 75% on the low side. And so that's what a pulse width is. It's how wide is the pulse within that particular frequency, in our case, 25 kilohertz. So by controlling how long the high and low pulses are on this particular output, that controls how fast the fan is. So 100% duty cycle is full fan speed. 0% duty cycle, the fan is off. 50%, the fan is gonna ramp down to 50% of its max speed and so on and so forth. So using this, we can now control the, uh, the speed of the fan. It actually turned out to be really, really simple to put this together. And now I have proper noise reduced fan speeds in all of my equipment around me. It's really, really awesome. So I decided to wrap it up in a nice, neat little package, and so this is what, what came of it. If you're interested more in this project, I'll have a link in the description below to a GitHub repository that'll have the source code for the DigiSpark. It'll have the um, PCB information for the circuit board. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know. Um, I have some more circuits in the pipeline that are already finished that I just need to make videos for. And I've also been promising you for the past several videos that I'd have a new Jenkinator set up. Well, Spoilers, it's kind of right here. It's currently in testing, and uh, it's gonna be in a video really, really soon once I get a few more things fixed with it. But it, it's working, and I'm really, really happy with this because it just started working a couple days ago, and now I can actually do things with it. So if you want to see some more Jenkinator stuff, um, go ahead and comment on this video because that's apparently what the algorithms want these days. They don't give a damn about the little bell icons or anything like that, so actually interact with this video and share with your friends and let them know how awesome this is. And until next time, which will be another custom circuit just like this. Later!